trying. Welcome to our home once again. Indeed. I guess we could say our home is their home. It is now, yeah. There you go. Except think, they don't know the, how to get here. I'm pretty sure most of them know how to get here. Really? I should dress better. Uh -huh. you're, you're fine. You're fine. All right, I'm you're trying. Fine. In fact, Miss Mary has been here. Yes. When we had puppies in the beta bump. Oh, my. And I said, we have, because this is why she's such a good treasure. I said, we have nine puppies. She said, no, you don't. You have ten. Ah. <laughs> and Dee, while I was waiting, taking her from the front door to the back, we had another puppy. Can you imagine? I can imagine. That yeah. happened right here in Sandy Land, right before my very eyes. I'm still trying to learn about dogs. Well, another 50 years, you'll have it down pat. Well, then I better work hard if I'm going to get it done in 50 years. Well, it took me 50 years. What did you say? I said it took me 50 years. Oh, and you started when you were two years old, right? Yes. Okay, I was wondering where that was going to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Be very careful. You have to sleep sometimes. Yes, I do. Yeah. yeah. We are so glad to have you here. What a blessing to have you here. What a blessing to be able to come to you. And I don't know if this thing's working or not, but we're trying it. Yeah. Um, and it, it's uh, it's affected my earrings, Harry. Oh. That's unacceptable. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. Just about the time we get this down, <laughs> we'll be able to go back to our church buildings. Well, we are hoping. Uh, we're closed until the 15th, which is Friday, which means we have a, a day or two to get our ducks in a quick row and get back into the churches by the 17th, if indeed uh, Governor Hogan thinks that it's okay to do that by then. Now, you still may have to wear a mask. I hope you're all uh, gathering some fancy schmancy masks to wear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I ordered a fancy mask. You ordered a fancy one? I did, because, you know, you got sometimes you got to be a little up upscale. If it's, is it one of those come clear down? Oh, it doesn't? No. No? No, uh, I didn't get one of those. Hmm. But it has... It has it has beads and sparkles and feathers out the side. It looks real pretty. Kind of like a fancy Easter hat, only okay. you wear it on your face. All right. Now, that's just yours. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, Lord. We're going to have a good time tonight. Yes. And we're going to begin, I think, with the word. Sounds good. Okay. Well, if you'll... Uh, Let me help you move around here. We're going to move around a little bit, see if we can't get uh, things where people can see better and hear better, and we just... Don't know what we're doing. Yes, we do. We do. Okay. You move that, and I'll move this. That's it. Okay? Yes, sir. Can you get in there all right? I'm going to get in there all right. Okay, good. And you can you can go see if, if I'm in there all right. And here we go. As I have a lot of scriptures. Now, one of the things that we did this um, is that we already have posted scriptures from Matthew and Mark for you. And um, I'm hoping that you had a chance to get to them and open them and read them. And if you didn't, go back later and read them because I'm not going to read all of them. I'm still going to read a substantial amount of them because it's part of the message tonight. It's part of something we've been uh, talking about and praying about. <laughs> Well, he did tell us to be fishers of that. Uh -huh. Anyway. <laughs> well, it, it's live. <laughs> it's live. Uh, but our scriptures are from Matthew 8, 14 through 34, Mark 4, uh, and 5. But I'm not going to read that many. Uh, I'm going to read just uh, 14 through 16 in Matthew. And then I'm going to go on to Mark. But the reading from Matthew tells us that when Jesus went to Peter's house, he saw that Peter's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a fever. Jesus touched her hand, and the fever left her. Then she stood up and began to serve Jesus. That evening, people brought to Jesus many who had demons. Jesus spoke, and the demons left them, and he healed all the sick. He did these things to bring about what Isaiah the prophet had said. He took our suffering on him, and carried our diseases. 
Now I'm going to go on down to Mark and like I said, find the other scriptures that are posted. They may be in the comments if you're on Facebook um, and, and read them. I'm going to skip down to Mark starting with verse 35. That evening, Jesus said to his followers, let's go across the lake. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him in a boat just as he was. There were other boats with them. A very strong wind came up on the lake. The waves came over the sides and into the boat so that it was already full of water. Jesus was at the back of the boat, sleeping with his head on a cushion. His followers woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care that we are drowning? Jesus stood up and commanded the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind stopped. And it became completely calm. Jesus said to his followers, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The followers were very afraid and asked each other, Who is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. But Jesus and his followers went to the other side of the lake, to the area of the Gerasene people. When Jesus got out of the boat, instantly a man with an evil spirit came to him from the burial caves. This man lived in the caves, and no one could tie him up, not even with a chain. Many times people had used chains to tie the man's hands and feet, but he always broke them off. No one was strong enough to control him. And day and night he would wander around the burial caves and on the hills, screaming and cutting himself with stones. While Jesus was still Far away, the man saw him, ran to him, and fell down before him. And the man shouted in a loud voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I command you in God's name, do not torture me. He said this because Jesus was saying to him, You evil spirit, come out of the man. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? And he answered, my name is Legion, because there are many spirits. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send him out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on a hill near there, and the demons begged Jesus, send us into the pigs. Let us go into them. So Jesus allowed them to do this. The evil spirits left the man and went into the pigs. Then the herd of pigs, about 2,000 of them, rushed down the hill into the lake and were drowned. The herdsmen ran away and went to the town and to the countryside, telling everyone about this. So people went out to see what had happened. And they came to Jesus, saw the man who used to have the many evil spirits sitting, clothed, and in his right mind. And they were frightened. And the people who saw this told the others what had happened to the man who had the demons living in him, and they told about the pigs. And then the people began to beg Jesus to leave their area. As Jesus was getting back into the boat, the man who was freed from the demons begged to go with him, but Jesus would not let him. He said, go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man left and began to tell the people in the ten towns about what Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. When Jesus went in the boat back to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him there. A leader of the synagogue named Jairus came there, saw Jesus and fell at his feet. And he begged Jesus, saying again and again, My daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so she will be healed and will live. So Jesus went with him. And a large crowd followed Jesus and pushed very close around him. And among them was a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered very much from many doctors and had spent all the money she had. But instead of improving, she was getting worse. When the women, woman heard about Jesus. She came up behind him in the crowd and touched his coat. She thought, if, if I can just touch his clothes, I will be healed. 
Instantly, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed from her disease. At once, Jesus felt power go out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? And his followers said, look at how many people are pushing against you. And you asked who touched me? But Jesus continued looking around to see who had touched him. The woman, knowing that she was healed, came and fell at Jesus' feet, shaking with fear. She told him the whole truth. Jesus said to her, dear woman, you are made well because you believed. Go in peace. Be healed of your disease. Still speaking, some people came from the house of the synagogue leader, and they said, your daughter is dead. There is no need to bother the teacher anymore. But Jesus paid no attention to what they said. He told the synagogue leader, don't be afraid, just believe. Jesus let only Peter, James, and John and the brother of James go with him. When they came to the house of the synagogue leader, Jesus found many people there making lots of noise and crying loudly. And Jesus entered the house and said to them, why are you crying and making so much noise? The child is not dead, only asleep. But they laughed at him. So after throwing them out of the house, Jesus took the child's father and mother and his three followers into the room where the child was. And taking hold of the girl's hand, he said to her, Talitha kume. And this means, young girl, I tell you to stand up. At once, the girl stood right up and began walking. She was 12 years old. Everyone was completely amazed. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be God. to God. Oh, I'm going to need that. I'm sorry. That's all right. I'm a little confused. There's just so much going on in these scriptures. And one of the things we talk about all the time, and I, trimming it is hard, but the word of God never returns void. It's so important to hear the actual word of God. Now, I studied these this morning, and I thought that by reading them, and thereby telling the stories, that we would catch hold of something that's vitally important. The fact is, like most pastors, I have preached on each story in these readings, and each one of them has so much to say, and, and each one has its underlying story and wisdom to unfold. But when you look at these stories as a whole, and if you took the time to read through the scriptures that we had posted ahead of time, you can see that the primary emphasis on both selections seems to be Christ's ability to overcome the natural sickness and disease, and the supernatural, demons, and controlling the forces of nature. And as, as we read about them, we're amazed at how easily the most profound obstacles bow before the power inherent in our Lord. How do you not find yourself in total awe? And in truth, we should be in awe, because these acts are jaw-dropping. These things are so clearly a sign of God's activity that as they went on, we know that even the Pharisees couldn't write them off. And in the story of the little girl, we know that even though this is early in Jesus' ministry, even then, some of the synagogue leaders had an understanding that here in this man, this strange teacher and preacher was a power that had to be God ordained. But as we study these stories, let us not lose fact of the, let's not, let us not lose sight of the fact that Jesus, at this moment in time, is fully human. In other words, what he was able to do was not dependent on him being God, but rather dependent on his own connection to God. Like, unlike any other, before or since, unlike any other, 
He was capable of allowing the power of the Holy Spirit to flow through him. It's this same Holy Spirit that rolled away the stone and resurrected him. It's the same Holy Spirit power that he gave first to his disciples and then to all who have chosen to follow him, all. And with that in mind, dare we ask ourselves, why are we not walking in that same power? Jesus declared to his followers in John 14, 11 through 14, and I take this from the message. Believe me, I am in my Father and my Father is in me. If you can't believe that, believe what you see. These works. The person who trusts me will not only do what I'm doing, but even greater things. Because I, on my way to the Father, am giving you the same work to do that I've been doing. And you can count on it. From now on, whatever you request along the lines of who I am and what I am doing, I'll do it. That's how the Father will be seen for who he is in the Son. And I mean it. Whatever you request in this way, I'll do. So why are we, who have been given this gift of the same Holy Spirit that drove demons out, that stilled the storm, that loosed the sick, why are we still unable to walk in that power? Because it's clearly ours to walk in. That's a hard question, isn't it? And I don't like it. Here's another thing to ponder. Those things that we consider natural as opposed to the supernatural, those things that are common to all mankind, sickness and disease and impairment, are they natural? Are they natural? If these things also had to bow the knee to Christ, are they a natural part of the cost of living? No. No. They entered through sin, just as the demons who were unleashed to torment in a greater degree entered the world. And so perhaps we need to look at things in a different light. Perhaps it's time, dear saint, to begin to stretch our thinking to a place where we begin questioning more instead of accepting as our inescapable condition the things that have edged into our lives as if they belong to us because perhaps we are of a certain age. We all joke about the golden years, but it's not very funny when you get right down to it. I have several complaints I've taken to my doctor, which he has addressed with the not so comforting precursor. Well, now, a woman of your age has to, hmm, has to expect. I want you to know, Harry and I believe in miracles. Amen. We've each seen them and experienced them. And we've also, like you, worn the attacks of the world like an old comfy jacket. We also believe we're supposed to be as much a vessel of the Holy Spirit as Jesus was. And that is how we work, how we pray. It's what we expect. It is what God has promised and what Jesus died for. So know this. The time is coming when these words from John will be fulfilled in full, not just in part. And we are standing on that and we are believing for that. And so we pray fervently and we wait expectantly and we believe for such a manifestation of the spirit that even hearing the word, people will be healed. More importantly, people will be saved. Until Christ returns, none of us will escape earthly death. So the greatest miracle is still 
the gift of eternal life provided by the death and resurrection of Christ. And that is what we preach. That's what we believe. But, oh, saints, the time is coming. And the time is now at hand for healing and for victory. And be assured, be blessedly assured that God is very much on the move right now. And that while the world seems to be spinning completely out of control, everything we hear has a conflictive answer to it. You think you've gotten hold of the truth, and the next thing you see turns it on its head. The world may seem to be out of control, but I can assure you that God is very much in control. Amen. You go back. You reread the stories in Matthew and Mark. Grab hold of the marvelous message of a God that holds power over all that is. Hallelujah. Praise God for it. Amen. Amen. Oh, we're going to play some music. 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 We'll get the music man here. I'll get my chair out of the way. I'll try not, not to drop. You, you got the chair? He's going to pull it out from under me, but it's too heavy to get to surprise me with it. <clears throat> Amen? I would never surprise you with something like that. No, you wouldn't. I... There's one thing we need to talk about today. Yes, sir? That you haven't talked about yet. What? It's somebody's birthday. It is somebody's birthday? Yeah. Jerry. It's Jerry's birthday. Are you watching her? Um, hey, I'm watching her. Jerry? I'm watching you, Jerry. See here, huh? Are we going to sing happy birthday to her? We're going to sing a different happy birthday song. Uh-huh. See? It's one that you haven't heard before. Of course it is. Of course <laughs> it is. I'll, 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 I'll clap along. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you every day of the year. May you feel Jesus near, a happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you, and the best that you've ever had. How about that? How about that? I like it. I love oh, the song. Yeah. I love Jerry. We oh, love yes. you. God bless you. And I need to ask you, Jerry, are you still keeping those people in line that live there? I'll tell you what, she has her hands full, doesn't she? She's got her hands full, but I believe she's capable. I believe she is. All right. Oh, We're well, ready to sing I'll some hymns. You, God is so good and faithful. Our oh, first Jesus. hymn is great, Grace Greater Than Our Sin. God's amazing grace. Yes, Lord.
hem of the church, grace that is greater than all our sins. Here's another favorite of the church, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. praise him. Oh, we do. Yes, indeed. That's not always easy when things are gone the way we think they ought to go. But all things. All things. All things. Even bad things. And we hope you're out there singing. And you know what the book says, too. For all things work together for good to those who are the called, called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. And you, O oh saints, are the called. Amen. Amen. God gives us the victory. Victory in Jesus. <laughs> Precious blood, atoning 
It's your turn. It's my turn. Yes. Do the do the benediction. Yes, sir. All right. I pray now that the same Jesus oh, who walked the shores of Galilee, the same Jesus who set that man free from that legion oh, of devils, the same Jesus who healed the woman who touched the hem of his garment, will bless you. Will bless your family. Yes. We'll bless the work of your hands yes. until Jesus returns for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> God willing, and the creek don't rise. <laughs> Good night, Sam.